we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're gonna get di yuan digital wallets, they're gonna receive digital yuan, they're gonna use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're gonna take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Uh, uh, Chair Gensler, he's, uh, a, he is a, he, as my mother used to say, J.D., he's too smart to be so stupid. The uh, of Chair Gensler have been anything but uh, directed towards accomplishing that mission. In fact, he is restricting the, uh, the options uh, for American investors uh, in driving American innovation and opportunity out of this country. I, I, think I don't know how deep we want to get in the weeds here, Judy, but you worry that the Fed's tool, the one that Powell talks about, in terms of uh, trying to, uh, uh, to handle inflation, might not work and that the more effective way would be to shrink the balance sheet. Can you explain that in layman's terms, why it, it could be futile uh, just to raise the rate on, on deposits? Yes, and, and I think it's important that people do understand that the Fed's primary tool now for raising the interest rate is to pay a higher rate of return to banks, depository institutions who are required to keep accounts, reserve accounts at the Federal Reserve. That's effectively their checking account. And so the way that the Fed plans to do those 25 basis point hikes, and they're now talking maybe three, maybe four, is to raise that rate. Now, they're paying banks to keep the money idle, to not make loans with it. So I don't see that's how that is going to help increase supply, which is our inflation problem. And they will also, in tandem with that, raise the rate that they pay non-banks, that they pay hedge funds and money markets to likewise just put cash at the Federal Reserve overnight, night after night, we're up to about 1.7 trillion in that market through the New York Fed. And my point is, you are, you are effectively inducing banks to not get involved in providing the loans that would potentially create businesses that would lead to increasing supply. And the goal instead, and, and Chair Powell acknowledged, the Fed can only attempt to decrease demand. And I think it would be much better, since interest rate manipulation is really the Fed's only tool, to start to reduce that gargantuan balance sheet. They, they added more than $4.4 trillion since COVID started in March of 2020. What they should be doing is selling off that balance sheet to reduce the Fed's footprint. The Fed is, is too prominent in financial markets. It's too powerful in creating the money by purchasing government debt from banks. And it's too political. So I think it would be much healthier to get some sense of price discovery, to let open market sales, let, let the demand and supply dynamics for Treasury securities help to determine the interest rate instead of doing it the other way that I talked about, interest on reserves, which is really by diktat, where a small group of officials says this is what the interest rate should be. I don't think that's a healthy way to allocate capital. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. 
And we have Representative Tom Emmer on Gary Gensler. But we know he's playing nothing but the Hegelian dialectic. But he is definitely correct on the mission of the chess piece. We know Gary Gensler has been pushing regulation back on purpose. He did a Bitcoin futures ETF instead of a spot Bitcoin ETF because he needed that casino to keep going for the new road order. And then we have Judy Shelton coming in with fire. We know she's a part of the New Road Order also, but she came in with the truth today. We know the Fed is manipulating the market for this perfect crash, but we're just waiting on that main event. But that's the reason why I show you the repo on a daily basis, and she went over this perfectly. Not too many people are going to understand it, but she went over it perfectly, exactly how they're manipulating markets. But none of these New Road Order chess pieces give you the reason why and we know why the fourth industrial revolution where the robots algorithms and drones take over the economy while the sheep go inside of the metaverse because we know when it comes to the new road order it's all planned out you have a wonderful day most powerful person in the world is the storyteller the storyteller sets the vision values and agenda of an entire generation to come Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.